Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I am really excited to delve deep into our guest's brain and massage it and figure out all the ways he's making passive income with his very interesting book model. But before we get into our guest, I would really be remiss if I did not properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And look, you got to automate, automate, automate. Hosting at domination.com forward slash the land geek. How are you, Scott Todd? Mark, I'm excited. You know, like I, I've got my uh, shiny objects hat syndrome on right now because that's where I'm going. That's what I love about our podcast is because we get these really cool, interesting guests. And then all of a sudden it makes us about literally like I, I guarantee you by the time we're done with this podcast, you and I will be 10%, 10% smarter. Right. I think so. So we're blessed in that sense. Um, and before we talk about how we're going to become 10% smarter with our guests, I want to just plug away and remind the listeners, go to the landgeek.com, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. If you are not making $10,000 a month right now in passive income, then you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, you owe it to the world to start moving the needle in your life and taking massive, what's the word? Massive? Action. Action. Massive action. Exactly. So, um, so please do that. And, and then once you've got your sales, you got to manage these notes. Don't be like me in the old days, messing around with Mort Care on a PC and, uh, and having to manually put in all my payments. Automate it with LoanGeek. Dot io because we can always make more money, but we can't get more time. Scott, you anything you want to plug? Uh, look, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. We talk about it, but you know, Mark, for everybody that's struggling with Craigslist, let me tell you what you're missing out on uh, posting domination. One, you're missing out on an automated solution. But beyond that, what you're, what you're missing out on is like regular sessions, Q and A sessions on what's working in your Craigslist postings, what's not working, what's you know, what's what's changing. Those that's that community exists within posting domination. So if you're struggling, forget the automation part of it. If you're struggling to get your ads out there with any sort of volume, be like some of the students who who are posting eighty ads a week. I can show you how. I love it. All right, let's talk about Tom Corson Knowles from tckpublishing.com. TCK Publishing is an international publisher specializing in mass market trade book publishing. They publish fiction and nonfiction eBooks, print books, and my favorite, audiobooks in almost all genres and niches. Tom's mission is to help his clients earn a full-time income from royalties. And Tom does this by creating a comprehensive publishing and marketing strategy unique to each book and each author. He's nothing like the big five publishing companies, although he competes with them. Every publishing and marketing decision comes from his guiding principles, which we're going to discuss. Tom Corson Knowles, welcome to the Art of Passive Income podcast. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, it's, it's great to uh, have you. Also from my alma mater, IU. So we already know He's a genius, right? Harvard, <laughs> Midwest. Um, Tom, you're, you're, a, you're a serial entrepreneur. You're a blogger and an international bestseller, right? And you're one of those kids that just kind of like was self-actualized at 13, um, starting your own business. So let's kind of delve a little deeper into your model and let's pick apart the passive income pieces of it because that's what this podcast is about, the art of passive income. So Tom, tell us... Um, what made you start TCK Publishing and where are the passive pieces of it? So, you know, I basically started just as a writer myself. I was uh, in college, my classmates wanted, like their dream job was to go to Wall Street, become investment bankers. Like that's what everyone wanted to do at business school at IU. 
And that to me is just like my nightmare. Like I couldn't imagine why anyone would ever want to work a hundred hours a week in a cubicle on wall street. I, I did it. And, uh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And so I was, I guess, you know, wise enough to know myself to know that I'd be really miserable if I, if I, if I went down that route. And so I just, you know, reflexively out of habit, just opened up a document on my, on my computer and started writing, you know, what I thought it meant to be, to be successful in life, to have financial freedom, but also have time freedom, be able to do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do, wherever I want to do it with whoever I wanted to do it and to have good health and good relationships. Right. And so I just started writing down this stuff in a document on my computer. And eventually I shared it with a few people and they said, Hey, you know, that you should get this tradition published. Like this could be a book. And I was like, Oh, okay. That sounds cool. So I did all my research and, and turned it into a manuscript and started pitching agents and publishers. And I just failed miserably for six years. Couldn't get a book deal. Like 99.9% .9 of authors who try to get a traditional book deal, I, I failed. Uh, and so I pretty much gave up on that dream and I started some other businesses with some nice passive income, like in network marketing and did really well with that. Um, and then about five years ago, I just was just having a conversation with someone. He said, Hey, why don't you just self publish your book on Amazon Kindle? And I had no idea it was possible because self publishing when I, when I wrote my first book over 10 years ago, self publishing was not a passive income model, right? It was a model where you had to spend $25,000, get 5,000 books shipped to your garage. Every time you sold a book, you had to collect the cash from the customer, make the sale, put the book on the envelope, make sure your books were stored in warehouse and somewhere where we weren't going to get moldy. Right. And then send them to the customer and make sure the customer got them. And it just seemed like this terrible, terrible business model. But as soon as I realized I could just upload a file to Amazon and get paid every single month passive royalties, that to me was like a no brainer. And so I did that. And that first month I had 11 sales and I was, I was thrilled. I knew immediately this was going to be huge because I didn't tell anyone I had published my book. I was so embarrassed. I had to self publish. I didn't tell anyone what I'd done. So I made 11 sales just automatically on autopilot on Amazon with no marketing at all. And so in 10 months from then, I had my first $12,000 a month in passive income just from ebook royalties on Amazon because I, I was just publishing books every morning. I was so excited to, to wake up, to write my next book, to publish it, to market it, to build my platform. Uh, and that's what I did and grew from there. And so then the publishing business came out of that because I started getting emails from other authors and writers and aspiring authors said, hey, you know, why, how do you, you know, write a book? How do you publish a book? How do you market a book? And so I was answering a lot of questions and eventually my coach said, hey, you should create a video training course. So I did that. And I've since had over 40,000 students go through my online video training courses to learn how to write, publish, and market their books. And then out of that, my students asked me essentially, uh, Tom, I love your course and everything you teach, but I don't want to find editors and cover designers. And I don't want to do the publishing and the distribution and the marketing and promotion. Can you do that for me? And so that's why I started the publishing company about four years ago because my, my students asked me to. Um, so that's <laughs> the long winded story of how it all came full circle. But, you know, it really just started out with an idea. I just had this idea of, Hey, I wanted to write something. Uh, you know, I don't want to go down Wall Street. I want to do something else. I want to write a book about, you know, my, my journey and my experiences. And, uh, it kind of evolved from there. I, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. I mean, can you really make a full time living selling eBooks on Amazon? I mean, like I've got an eBook on Amazon. I've made like 20 bucks last month. I mean, there, there are literally thousands and tens of thousands and, and soon to be hundreds of thousands of people, self-published authors who are earning a full-time income on Amazon and with other retailers online. Um, so it's happening already. There's a lot of people doing it already. Um, the market is huge, right? So ebook sales uh, uh, just on Amazon alone went from zero in like 2009 um, to uh, over $6 billion a year now right? And just a couple of years, less than a decade. And that's just sales in the US for Amazon Kindle alone, right? So the global market for trade books, and so trade books are any kind of book you, you generally read other than like textbooks, right? Not like textbooks, but trade books are like fiction, nonfiction, books you buy in a bookstore, books you buy on amazon.com. That market globally is $80 billion. And it's about, it's going to be in a couple of years, it'll be about $20 billion of that will be ebook sales. Right. And audiobook sales around the 1 billion mark uh, for digital audiobook sales. Right. So, and, and the ebooks and digital audiobooks is where all the growth is. Right. So, you know, the, the print sales are declining globally. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of reasons, but it's for a lot of people, it's just it's more convenient for them to buy ebooks and audiobooks online. Right. Like you said, you know, you love audiobooks. Right. And so when you look at the market, you know, there, there's, there's no barriers to entry. Right. I mean, there's like, it, it takes almost nothing to write a book, to, to publish it, um, to market it. 
uh, it takes time, right? But it doesn't take a ton of money. You don't need, you know, a huge factory. You don't need a ton of employees. It's not the kind of business where you have to go out and raise a massive amount of capital to get into. Um, but at the same time, when you're a self-published author today, you have the, you can have the same distribution online as any major publisher, right? without any extra expense. So you can, you know, your book next to a traditionally published book on Amazon, it has the same potential for success. There's, there's nothing that they can do that you can't do, right? And in fact, a lot of times you have more options with you use programs like KDP Select that they're not using. You can get special promotion programs from Amazon. Um, and so when you look at the market, it's so big, it's growing so fast, there's a mass amount of opportunity, right? And the key is to find out, you know, what are the key things I have to do to make my books more successful and to get yourself more sales. And so that really all starts with branding, right? Everything starts with branding. So branding is essentially just your message, right? So you already have a brand for your book. You already have a brand for yourself, whether you realize it or not, whether you consciously decided or not that you have a brand. And the brand is essentially what the customer thinks about your book. It's the message they, they get, right? And so your brand for a book starts with the book title, right? The number one reason people buy books is word of mouth sales still today with the internet age. The number one reason people buy books is word of mouth. And so the first thing they hear is your book title, right? So if you have a book, you know, I have a book called secrets of the six figure author. Well, how does a word of mouth sale happen? Well, someone has to you know, read your book or see it on Amazon, buy your book. They have to like your book enough to say, Hey, I'm going to remember this book title. I'm going to share it with someone else. So they share it with someone else in a conversation and say, Hey, you know, you should go buy secrets of the six figure author. It's a great book right? And that person has to then go online or, or go to a bookstore. Uh, so most people times they're, they're going to go online they're going to type in what they thought they heard, uh, what your book title is, and they're going to find it on Amazon or some other retail online and buy it. And that's how a word of mouth sale happens. And so one of the most common reasons that authors have books that don't sell well uh, is because they, they miss out on word of mouth sales, right? Because they use a title for the book that's catchy or a pun or homophones, which is like words that sound similar, but you can't spell them because you don't know which word it was, right? Um, so when you have that kind of, it's like the telephone game, right? So when this model breaks down, when word of mouth sales break down, you're not gonna get, you know, any, any step in the process breaks down, you're not gonna get the word of mouth sales. So Tom, I've got a book and I'm thinking of titling it Dirt Rich, right? As opposed to Dirt Poor. I think it's clever. Scott's smiling. I think it's um, pretty good, yeah. But there is the key a- key that is the subtitle. Right. So once you have a good title, a good catchy title that's unique that people can remember and they can share it. Um, the key with a book like that is you have a catchy title, but no one knows what you're really talking about. Like, yeah, it kind of sounds like you're talking about money. Right. So the subtitle is going to clearly uh, and, and quickly tell the reader what your book is going to do for them. Because right? people don't buy a book because you know, they like you and they, well, I mean, a lot of people do like your fans will. Right. But someone who doesn't know you, who just sees your book on Amazon, they're not going to buy their book for any reason other than that they want a result, right. For a nonfiction book like that, they want a result. So what is the result your book is going to deliver to your customer? Right. How to get out of solo economic dependency in 18 months. So, um, but although you can't say solo economic dependency, so no one is going to understand that. Um, but Scott, Todd, what do you think yeah. the model? Well, I, I do like the model. You know, like I, I've seen, um, I've seen the model work for other people. You know, there's, there's a guy that uh, I, I know that uh, he got on Kindle book publishing early on and um, he went out and uh, I think he wrote three or four kind of novels, you know, like this, um, this, this fictitious character named uh, Mango Bob. Uh, and his adventures through Florida, he wrote one book and then he turned around and hit the next book and he got four books out there. And when you look at his, you know, like his Amazon rating, you know, he's always like in the, I think like the 40,000s. So he's not like a number one, you know, top book. Um, but he's, he's out there and, um, he's, he, he's continuing to make pretty dang good money because he's, uh, you know, he, he's got this book series. They, they download one book or they get one book. And then what they do, they're going to go get uh, the other three because they're interested in it. So then all of a sudden, his downloads from Kindle through the uh, Kindle Un Unlimited, I think. I mean, they just, the passive income just soars because all of a sudden, he's got this fan base that he's built up because they like, they like what they read in the, one of the books. Hmm. That's a great point. And it illustrates one of the things you want to do to be successful long term is to have multiple books. 
right? It's and, you know, a common theme in, in any business is you want to increase the, the lifetime value of your customer. So if you only have one ebook for $3 or something on Amazon, well, the lifetime value of your customer is only $3 if they just buy your ebook, right? But if you have five books or 10 books, or if you have coaching services or, or training courses or some other things to upsell those customers to, to increase the lifetime value of your customer, then you can grow your business much, much faster. You know, Mark, I'm, I'm listening to, uh, and, and I, I do like what Tom said, you know, like what, what the book could be, could be a, um, could be like, um, in a way, a marketing piece, you know, something to put your name out there or, or talk about the other services. And in fact, I'm listening through Audible right now. I'm listening to a, a book right now. And this is a very popular book. I mean, this book that I'm listening to, is, it's, it's um, Virtual Freedom by Chris uh, Drucker. I love that book. Yeah. Okay, it's a great book, right? But I, as you listen to it, what is he doing the whole time? It's like he's always pitching his virtual uh, admin finder. You know, like, oh, you go over here, virtual admin finder or whatever the website is. I, I should know it by now. I tune it out. But, you know, he's pitching that, you know, he, he's referencing, he's got little things like this is, this is my customer's experience with this website that I actually operate and own. So, you know, you look at this and you think like, well, can, should, I, should I actually sell for my book? Why not? I mean, best, best selling authors do. Why shouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that from a business standpoint, if I were going to write a book, which I'm, I've already done, right? Now I'm, I have a, I've got a luxury because I've already got a community of people, right? Now, if I didn't have that, I would actually, and I want to get Tom's uh, comment on this, I would pre-sell the book before I actually wrote it. And that way I know I've got a market I've, I've given myself a deadline here, right? Like, oh, I better do this or, you know, I would have a bunch of unhappy people. So, um, and then I can, I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of wrapping my head around the actual passive piece. Like it's a one-time build and you've got this recurring income, yet the marketing side of it, can that be automated? I guess it's, yeah, okay. So Absolutely. let's walk through that. Well, okay. So first of all, you know, in terms of passive income, the book business is there's, there's nothing better, right? Because you own the copyright for your work in the U S for 75 years after you die. Right. I don't know any other business in the world where you're guaranteed income for 75 years after you're dead. Right. Because as long as there's a retailer like Amazon, you're going to have distribution for your work. Right. Um, so you can pass it on to your kids, your, your grandkids, your great grandkids. Right. I don't know any other business that has that kind of long-term, uh, potential for income. And so the key is, you know, first of all, you have to write a book in an evergreen market. You, know, you have to write a book that's going to be valuable, you know, a year from now, five years from now, 50 years from now, right? Because if you're writing a, you know, a book on like, I've got a book on Facebook marketing. It was, I wish I'd never written that book almost, right? Because, you know, every month Facebook changes something, I have to go back, I have to update the book. It, it's not passive, right? But if you're writing, you know, fiction, if you're writing self-help, like if you're writing a book like you have, with principles and strategies that are going to be working five years, 10 years, 50 years from now, you have this massive potential for long-term success and long-term sales, right? And so in terms of marketing, you know, it all starts with a brand, right? So everything starts with a brand and every decision you make in terms of marketing is going to come from there. So the brand is like, what is the promise for a nonfiction book? What is the promise you're making to your customer, right? And you talked about that, Mark. And so once you understand really clearly what your brand is, then you design the book to be successful based on your brand. So you design a book cover with a professional book cover designer based on your brand that's going to resonate with your customer, right? And so a great example of, you know, the theme, the, like, what, how you want to think about book covers is think about movie posters. You, know, you go to the movie theater, you see these posters, like, so you see like the James Bond poster. And it's like, you know, there's like a helicopter exploding and there's like, you know, a beautiful woman with a gun or something like that, right? Like you can see exactly like, immediately, it's like, this is going to be exciting, right? Like, what are the emotions that it's eliciting in, in your, in your viewer and your potential customer, right? And so for a book like yours, Mark, you want the cover to feel like what, how you want your customer to feel because we make emotional buying decisions, not logical buying decisions, right? And so everything comes from that brand, right? Um, so the, from the book cover to the title to the book description on Amazon, which is crucial to your sales. So you want to write your book description like you would write marketing copy, right? So, you know, a lot of online marketers, they might pay $10,000, $20,000 for a good copywriter to write a sales page for them. Well, that's what your book description is on Amazon. It's your sales page, right? So I know people who hire copywriters to write really great copy for their books on Amazon to help them increase their sales. So these are things that you do one time 
And once it's done, it's going to work for you forever. So the book cover, the book title, the book description, these are things that you do one time. And after that is done, you don't have to change it. You can change it, but you don't have to. Right. Um, so, and then, then that's the key to marketing, right. Is creating something that converts well. Because once you have something that converts well and you have a good lifetime value of your customer, you can afford to then spend money on marketing, right? Or spend time on marketing, right? But if you have a bad book cover, a bad book title, a bad book description, it doesn't matter if you have a budget of a million dollars, you're just gonna be throwing that money down the drain, right? More money does not solve a bad business, right? More money does not solve the problem of not being able to convert potential customers into customers. Does that make sense? I, I, I love it, it totally makes sense. Right. Um, so Scott, how can we automate this and create a book business where we write books, we sell books, we market books, and we've got this 75 year, you know, basically, uh, you know, intellectual property that, that yeah. we can pass on to our children. In fact, I got a buddy who actually bought the intellectual property of, uh, of a best selling author and his, from his estate and like, it's just cash flows. Well, Mark, I actually have a book. I actually wrote a book. I know. And, and I make, I mean, this is why my ears are perking up here because that's a model that I, I did. I did one time. I still make a hundred bucks a month from that book. Um, and a month, you know, so it's like, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's actually on peer to peer lending and the platform has changed. And I mean, I should probably go back in and, and uh, update it, but you know what? I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to, cause it's a lot of work to write a book. And so I was talking to Tom before the, uh, the call started, I'm thinking like, man, could I get ghost writers to, that I give them good topics, you know, a well outlined uh, thing that what I want, and then just have the ghost writer go to town and write it and start to build this, um, build this brand because, you know, I, I don't enjoy writing. Um, so, you know, I would, I would definitely have to automate this, this book factory, uh, to go out. But I mean, there's lots of topics that I could think of that I would want covered and I could still, even with a ghostwriter, put my own spin on it. Um, you know, the, the problem is how much do you want to really invest in the book? You know, because, uh, you know, if, if I was the writer, I mean, cause like Mark, you were talking about like testing it first to see if there's a market there. Well, if you're going to go to the Amazon platform, it's kind of, you can't do that. You can't pre-sell it because, well, you, you can actually list books for pre-order on Amazon. What's that? that? You can actually list eBooks for pre-order on Amazon for up to 90 okay. days ahead before you publish it. But you have to actually like deliver that book to customers, right? At the end of the nine days, or you're, you're canceled from the pre-order program. Right, 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 right. Um, but one of the things you can do is just market research. Right. And so I actually have a software tool for authors where, and we talk all about market research. Right. And so, you know, simple thing to do is you can go to Amazon, type in the keywords related to your book. So it could be, you know, land investing or something like that. And you can find all the best selling books in that market on Amazon. And then you can see, you know, you can see first of all, how well they're selling. You can see exactly how many sales they have. So I have a tool that's free at tckpublishing.com slash calculator. And you can type in the Amazon sales rank for any ebook or any physical book on Amazon. It'll tell you exactly how many copies that book is selling in each month or how many copies you would need to sell in one day, like during a book launch to outrank that book on Amazon. All right. So you can see immediately how big that market is using that tool. Um, so like in terms of like how many sales are actually happening in that market. And then the other thing you should do to come up with book ideas is read all the reviews right? Or you can have an assistant, right? Go through and read all the positive reviews and the negative reviews for all the top books in this market and take notes of all the common themes. What are the things that readers hate about these books? What are the things readers love about these books? Right? And then there you can see clearly, once you've summarized this information, you can see exactly where the gaps are in the market, right? What are the things that readers really want in this market, but no other author is offering them, no other book out there is offering them. And that's how you can create a book that's going to be a bestseller and stay a bestseller because it's unique to the market, right? A big problem a lot of people make, Scott, is when they, they go out and they hire ghostwriters, right? And they're just like, oh, just write a book that's like Think and Grow Rich, right? But no one wants to buy a Me Too book, right? Why would anyone buy a book that's just like Think and Grow Rich when they could buy the original? Because the original has the brand, it has the cachet, it has the reviews, right? So if you can create something unique in your market that's uniquely valuable to your audience, to your readers, that's the kind of book that's going to stay on the bestseller list on Amazon for year after year after year. So to give you an example, that we have a book from a client called Unlimited Memory. It's been number one on Amazon for over a year now. It's sold over 40,000 copies. Um, and it just keeps selling 
every single month because it's it's so unique because it, it's just very different from the other books out there and it solves a huge problem for a lot of the readers out there because a lot of the books on memory were like long 300 pages you know mostly story not much technique right and this author was totally different it was short straight to the point all technique right and so that's what you want to do is you want to create something unique to your market that's uniquely valuable because that's what's going to sell well year after year after year this is this is gold hey hey mark i mean you you know nick lopper right you know i know uh, nick so nick nick actually wrote a book called work smarter and uh 350 online resources for today's top uh today's top entrepreneurs use to increase productivity and grow their business the funny thing is that he didn't write the book he actually had fancy hands Basically, basically use fancy hands to write the book. You know, like they, they went out to uh, uh, Entrepreneur on Fire, got the tips, the, the tips on every single episode, compiled them into one big book, and then added more detail up around it. And that's how he did his book. And I think uh, there's a, I know there's a post out on the internet that talks about how, uh, you know, basically the, this book, he had this book written and, um, it, you know, it basically cost him, let's see, it cost him like, uh, I don't know, 60, uh, $119 to write the book <laughs> in fancy hand time. That's fantastic. That is awesome. I right. Mean, and so that's another, another thing about books, right? It's like, so, you know, you mentioned like, you don't want to write the book, Scott, right? And there's right. so many people like that, but you don't have to write the book. So the book is really just a medium. Right? I think a lot of authors, a lot of writers out there, they get so attached to being an author. Right. But if you're an entrepreneur, you want to work on your business, not in your business. Right. And so right. if you're working on your business, you can realize that the book is simply a medium. It's simply a delivery vehicle for content, which is just information and ideas. Right. So if you've got a podcast show like this, if you do seminars, speaking events, uh, tr training, consulting, whatever, you have some kind of content, some kind of information already, you can simply turn that content into a book, right? By hiring a ghostwriter or doing something like with fancy hands, like Nick did, right? Where you have other people, bring the content together for you and organize it. So you don't have to be the one writing the book. It's really about the ideas. And again, the marketing, the branding, the messaging, the match with your customer, right? Delivering something of value to your customer. Because, you know, if you can pay $119 for a book and have someone compile all this information, but if it's not valuable for your audience, it's not going to sell well. That's right. That's right. Right. It has to, it has to add value. Exactly. All right. Well, Tom, we're at that point now in the podcast, where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives, what you got? So this is gonna seem a little bit strange, right? But I recommend studying everything Michael Singer. So he's got a great video we can list in the show notes on mindfulness training. He's also got a book called The Untethered Soul. Uh, amazing resources, right? Because it's all about mindfulness training, right? Which is about, being present in the moment. I mean, it's being aware of your emotions, being aware of what's going on inside your head. Because, you know, we talk about passive income here, Mark and Scott, and there's so many people. I remember when I started studying this stuff and I was explaining some passive income strategies to like my friends in college at the time, they all thought I was insane. Like how can you, no one's making $10,000 a month sitting in the room having everyone else do all the work for them, right? But the truth is lots of people are doing that, right? So it's about changing your mindset. And the problem is a lot of people, we have programming, conditioning mindsets that are holding us back from being successful, right? We have all these emotions inside of us and all these thoughts going on in our mind. And if you're not present with all these things and you can't just be there and notice them and walk past them, you're never gonna take action, right? You talked about taking massive action at the beginning of this interview. And you can't take massive action if you get stuck in your mind or your emotions. And that's why I highly recommend mindfulness training for every entrepreneur because it will help you get unstuck. And so whenever a problem comes up, emotion comes up, bad habits come up, you can be present, be aware of them and make those changes because being successful, earning tons of passive income, it's not that challenging. The real big challenge is the one between your, your head, right? It's your thoughts. It's your mind holding you back. So that's why I recommend that very much. I've read it. Um, and uh, I actually use Headspace for my mindfulness meditation. And I think you're right. Like I, I can tell you that um, it's difficult to do. It, it is a practice. But there are times when I am stressed out and I can sit back and I can kind of watch my thoughts and it kind of goes away. Like, it's like, oh, 
look at look at look what uh, look at the drama I'm creating in my mind. So um, he has a great thing in the book where if you personified your actual thoughts, and this is a person, right? You would never listen to them. They flip flop, right? They have absolutely no credibility. Yet when we actually listen to our thoughts and you know take them seriously, it, it can cause us a lot of problems. Um, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, get your wallet out. All right, I'm getting it out. This is a fun. This is a fun app for your Mac. It's called Flora Dora. Oh no, or Flora Dora. Have you ever thought, like, okay, I gotta send this uh, this over to myself. Like, I gotta afford this link or this PDF, or you know, it's like you go to email it to yourself. So what do you do? You bring up your mail client. You you know compose an email. You paste in there. You put in whatever you want. And then you hit send and you send yourself an email. Well, with this app, it's a little like uh, icon that sits at the top of your screen. You click it, you paste in there what you want, you hit the button and it goes. There's no bringing up the email client, it's up at the top menu bar. Check it out, it's pretty cool. Wait, now it says Floor Door can't be installed on Macintosh HD because OS X version 10.12 or later is required. Well, what, what version do you have? What are you like on like 18 year old software, dude? Uh, no, I've got Mark. I mean, the, the latest version like a year ago. I've got 10.12. I've got 10.11.6. I've got El Capitan. Oh, you're behind, man. You're behind. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta upgrade to Yosemite or Sierra, dude. Come oh on, my man. gosh. Well, I, I was scared to. All right, I'll do it now. Sierra. Well, don't do it right now because it'll, it'll shut down the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna. Do I, you know, I have it on my, uh, my just, laptop. Just, just go buy a new machine, Mark. Fine. I'm gonna put, I am going to buy a new machine, by the way. I'm going to get the MacBook with, Pro. With the menu bar at the top, the little the buttons at the top. Yeah, yeah. You and I are going to discuss it. All right. So now I can't. Instead of buying a $3 app, I just bought a $2,500 laptop. Thanks, guys. Nice. You're welcome. All right. So um, this is great. My tip of the week is going to be learn more about Tom at TCK Publishing. Wait, is it TCK Publishing? Yeah, tckpublishing.com. tckpublishing.com. Tom Corson Knowles, the founder of TCK Publishing. Uh, learn more there. I thought this was a great uh, podcast. Are, are we good, Tom? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to share more, um, but I know we don't have a lot of time today. Um, I would say, you know, if you're, if you're just starting out and really want to figure out like how to actually get this business model working for you, I do have a free video training course at ebookpublishingschool.com. And I walk you through the steps of actually getting your first book ready, published on Amazon and launching it like a pro to so start getting sales right away. I love it. Um, Scott, Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to just remind all the listeners and thank all the listeners, but the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Tom Corson Knowles is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. And if you do so, send us a screenshot of the review support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you free a passive income blueprint. Um, I want to thank everyone again. Scott Todd, you, you want to do the tagline? Yep. Ready? Everybody do it with me. Let freedom ring. Oh, it's so horrible. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.